Today we are going to make some LEDs to chloride from lead acetate and lead acetate solution. All of these here are basically waste material and I don't want to deal with it anymore. Therefore I'm going to recover the lead in the form of poorly soluble lead salt. The beaker you see right here isn't dirty but it actually contains basic lead acetate which is still in it because I let it stand for about a month. The first objective therefore is to get all of the lead acetate into solution. Some lead acetate solution containing some acetic acid too was added to the beaker and I hoped that it would dissolve. It took quite some time and a lot of stirring but in the end we managed to dissolve most of it. Some stayed undissolved but that shouldn't be a problem. Some more lead acetate was added and even some glacial acetic acid to make sure that everything dissolves. The moment that most of it dissolved was the fun part. Now it's time for some 37% hydrochloric acid. Lower concentrations are also okay, but I only have 37% hydrochloric acid and therefore we had to add this. A white precipitate of insoluble lead to chloride immediately precipitated out. The reaction taking place is the following. Lead acetate reacts with hydrochloric acid to form insoluble lead to chloride and acetic acid. In reality, the reaction is not as simple. Everything except the lead to chloride is in the solution in the form of ions. It's barely visible, but two layers have been formed here. In the upper layer there's water and maybe some more lead acetate and to make sure there's no more lead acetate left we added more hydrochloric acid. Nothing crashed out and therefore all lead acetate has already reacted. The solution was stirred a couple of times and afterwards a gravity filtration was performed. The gravity filtration turned out to take longer than expected but it worked out. All waste solution and all waste was transferred to a canister with water soluble and not water soluble lead waste. The lead chloride was transferred to a drying dish which turned out to be a huge mess but I didn't want to dry it in my vacuum desiccator. It still contains hydrochloric acid and hydrochloric acid would destroy the metal fittings in my vacuum desiccator and therefore we dried it in the sun. And yes, these are flies but it should be just minor contamination. After drying it in the sun for two days I still ended up putting it in the vacuum chamber because it didn't want to dry. We dried it over in hydrous calcium chloride. The lead to chloride was broken up using a glass stirring rod and afterwards it was transferred to a pre-weighed bottle. The bottle was weighed again and we ended up with 114.6 grams of dry lead to chloride which is contaminated with a few flies. And there you go, here's how you make lead to chloride from water soluble lead acetate waste. And that's how you make lead to chloride. If you liked today's video, make sure to drop me a like and if you don't want to miss out on further stuff like that, make sure to subscribe. I wish all of you a nice day, until next time.